Hello everybody and welcome back to another review of this wonderful and brilliant and fantastic Oxford United season. Today, Oxford were at home to Barnsley, a Barnsley side doing well in League One. It's an Oxford side that are on the ropes, under pressure manager team, looked poor pretty much all season, coming off the back of two very poor 2-0 defeats to Wickham and Burton. Oxford really needed something in this game. We didn't get anything in this game. It ended his three defeats now in a row. It is huge pressure on Carl Robinson and the side. But before I go any further, it is congratulations to Barnsley. Oxford have been beaten again. It finished Oxford United 1, Barnsley 2. Take nothing away from the Tykes. They've come and done a job on us. Very good away victory for Barnsley. Congratulations to you and your fans. Oh, from Oxford United's point of view, what can we say? Uh, it's it's from what we've seen for so many games this season where going forward it looks disjointed and it looks like we don't create many chances and at the back we look pretty weak and we look like we're going to concede and that's where this game has been won and lost really because Barnsley have just been more clinical than Oxford United and really don't let a spirited last 20-25 minutes of this game when Oxford got back into it paper over any cracks arguing Oxford were that great in this game today um, and yeah it's the misery continues and it is a real tough time and Saturday is going to be a big game but we had a transfer window that slammed shut on Tuesday evening, and there are changes to this Oxford United lineup as a result. Matty Taylor, Super Matty Taylor, it's not worked for him this season. He has jumped ship to Port Vale on loan, and my does this Oxford side look very weird without him in it, even within the squad. Atif Kanate, promising young player we've got from Forest. He starts um, for Oxford United, who rung in the changes. You had Yannick Wil Wiltshire back in the side. You had uh, Joseph playing on the, um, the right-hand side. And you had Billy Bowden up front by himself, which looked a really strange decision by uh, Carl Robinson. I know he said it was a fluid front four, but oh, why would you put Bowden up front on his own? He's not even a striker, and you've got Tyler Smith or Gat Gatlin Odonka on the bench. Um, chopping and changing in the back line once again. Anderson back in, Fleming out the side. Um, Brown back to left back. It is all over the place from Oxford United. We're coming up against a Barnsley side. Very well organised under Michael Duff in the playoffs. Not played for a while as well, so they'll be fresh. Devante Cole back in the side, leading the line up front with Norwood. Man, would we kill for strikers like those two. Mads Anderson at the back has been a bit of a rock for them too. And Kirby Kane back in that Barnsley lineup playing this season after he was on loan from Barnsley with us last season. And straight away from the start of this game, Oxford were you know, very lucky not to be down early doors. Barnsley with a fast start, getting joy from either flank. They were attacking down either from the left or from the right, but more from the from our right hand side when they were really exploiting Anderson. Um, and it just seemed like Barnsley were getting in, creating space in our penalty area. And it seemed like a matter of time before they would get the first goal. But the first chance went to Oxford, and it was Billy Bowden. And it came from just a long ball over the top, which he got onto. He could have taken another touch and, and brought it forward, but he took the shot early, but dragged it wide. Uh, not even a shot on target there. Uh, Norwood with the best chance uh, for Barnsley. Not soon, soon after that one, which he got in behind. Shot beat Eastwood, but Brannigan was back there to stop it on the six yard box before it kind of got to the line but it was frantic but the game did settle down after the first 10-15 minutes and Oxford got into it a bit more but then big disappointment for Oxford is Brack Cameron Brannigan went off injured it's unclear to see what he went off injured with but huge blow for Oxford losing Brann as it meant Marcus Bergwijn came back into the side but the game was meandering along, but it was Barnsley who grabbed it by the scruff of the neck and they got the first goal in this one. And it was from Oxford United just being so sloppy, just defenders and midfielders not doing their job, not closing people down. This time it was on Oxford's left. So Kieran Brown not really getting across to block a cross. And Adams Phillips just had oceans of space to deliver a good cross into a good area. It was a crowded penalty area. And Bobby Thomas was the guy who got his head on it and it just looped into the corner of the goal. An ugly goal, 
But I would say Barnsley deserved to be ahead at that time. Oxford didn't really create too much. But it was long balls that were causing problems, really, from either side. Uh, Joseph got in from a long ball, but he got, he did well, but he screwed his chance wide. Yannick got in from a long ball, but he, not for the first time. He does the, the first bit well, but his final ball or his pass or his shot isn't on point. And he was in you know, a woeful pass to Joseph, and the chance had gone. And then Cole nearly got in for Barnsley with a long ball over the top, which he just managed, which he kind of Missed up, messed up really, and Eastwood was able to get back and control. But half time, quite comfortable away performance for Barnsley. Um, and I would say Oxford have got a lot to do to turn this around in the second half. Um, Oxford's main threats, really weirdly, whereas last season we were all about attacking, well, not just last season for a while, we've been all about good football, comfortable football, getting the balls out wide and playing the ball through the third. Everything Oxford do now this season is just long ball. Uh, and, and it's really, really strange to see. And not that good to watch, really. But but second half, Barnsley did set sit off Oxford quite a lot. And they allowed us to kind of get into the game. And they were sort of relying to hit Oxford on the counter-attack. And they did. 58 minutes, it looked like this game was done and dusted when Oxford had a throw-in. It was our throw-in. We give the ball away. Devante Cole breaks it up the field. He did get a little bit lucky, but it got back to Herbie Kane, who found Nicky Cadden really well, and Nicky Cadden finished it nicely. Very good counter-attacking goal from Barnsley, and from that point, you thought, no way back for Oxford. Certainly when Barnsley nearly made it three, um, when Eastwood denied Norwood with a really, really good save. But the chance, but Oxford did continue to create some chances and I thought Barnsley were pretty sloppy at the back and I thought on another day Oxford could have taken advantage of this I don't think Barnsley's keeper was particularly good and for some reason I thought although Barnsley I thought would be quite solid defending Oxford's long ball long punt game struggled with it and chances came um Tyler Smith came on for Oxford United and he missed an absolute sitter long ball in behind got Tyler Smith in he was in that situation where he didn't really know what to do it looked like he would just he could just lob it over the goalkeeper he's lobbed it straight back into the hands of the keeper it's a really bad miss when you see it back I hope he gets a chance and scores a goal soon because that could come back to haunt him and you just thought, like, Oxford United, that's going to be three games now without a goal. But we did get a goal. 70 minutes. Tyler Goodrum starts the move. Looked good when he came on. Actually drove with the ball and got Oxford up the pitch. Ended up with the ball going through to Joseph, whose shot was deflected wide. But it was actually from that corner where Oxford scored a goal. Unbelievably, Oxford actually found a way it, back to goals. <laughs> Oxford actually found a way to score a goal for the first time in seemingly ages. It was the skipper, unmarked from a corner nice nice ball in good run good header oxford back in it piling on the pressure now um there were an effort from Brown, which just went over the bar from a goal mouth scramble. Bates skewed one over from a goal mouth scramble as well. Barnsley real backs to the war job, going into the time wasting um pantomime if you would like but every side kind of does and they saw the game out. Oxford couldn't really get up much of a head of steam going into injury time. And yes, it ends with another defeat. Um, three defeats in a row now. Uh, if there was any lingering doubt or about where this season is going to be heading, I think you're looking that we're going to be looking over our shoulder rather than looking up the table. That's for sure. Shrewsbury at home now seems a huge game for Oxford United and Carl Robinson. I thought for the large part the crowd stuck with the boys tonight and stuck with Robinson. There weren't too many chance of him going out, but I think if we are down against Shrewsbury, that could really change. I think a lot of fans kind of thought, well, Barnsley are a pretty good side. And again, fair play to Barnsley. They've come and done the job well. Um, but his Oxford United side looks very disjointed. It looks It's looked disjointed all season, and it was in full evidence again. Billy Bowden's not a striker. You've got Joseph out wide, just not really doing anything. They don't really seem to get Yannick into the game. They didn't really seem like know how to get Canati into the game. You've got some good ball players in McGuane and in Bate, but they don't do enough to influence the game in the final third for me. Jevon Anderson doesn't look like a fullback and shouldn't really be playing fullback again. We've got to look to try and play wingbacks. We saw no Brandon Fleming in there again today. This Oxford side looks absolutely all over the place. So it's pretty no surprising that the only goal came from just a long ball forward and just a ball uh, where someone's just made a good run and got a header on it. 
I just don't see where the goals are going to come from. We're going to come up against sides that are going to be better at the back, quite frankly, than Barnsley were today. I thought Barnsley weren't great at the back. I'll say it again. But Oxford just could not score the goals, could not create, could hit the target enough, could not create enough good chances, obviously, apart from the one that Smith pretty badly missed. So it's a it's a mess. It's a real mess. And it continues to be a mess. How long is this mess going to carry on for? Who knows? Uh, it's huge pressure. Huge, huge pressure on the game on Saturday. And I can already tell you, I'm not looking forward to it one bit. Shrewsbury are in good form. And they're the sort of side that I think are just going to come and kind of bully Oxford a little bit and be a bit too physical for us. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope that I am. For a third and final time, congratulations, Barnsley. Fans are uh, interested to know your comments on the game. Put them down below. Oxford fans, I'm sure you're going to be full of comments and full of criticism. Because as I said at the start, don't let 20 minutes of um, one side sitting deep and Oxford throwing balls into the box paper over any cracks. We were poor today and we've been poor this season. When's it going to end? Thanks very much for watching. We endure more on Saturday. Bye for now.